why the Gary V types who always just say all you have to do is work harder to succeed, I do not think are right. In fact, I take the opposite approach where I want to maximize my laziness potential at the, the best possible degree because these Gary V types, they're just saying, all you have to do is just, you have to wake up at, at 6 a.m., you go to bed at, at midnight and you're just gonna work all day, every day. But what what is, do you get any enjoyment out of that? And what are you actually working towards? Because what are your goals? I take a much different approach and I just want to get as much done as, hu as humanly possible. Because I know I could wake up at 6 a.m. and work for 15 hours straight every single day. But how much productivity can I produce in that 15 hours? Let's say, let's just use widgets as an example for productivity. Let's say I can produce 150 widgets of productivity in that 15 hour time span. All right, great. That's my capacity. Well, if I, if I know what I have to do and I can just want to produce as much as possible, why would I work those 15 hours when I can instead hire five people who can produce those 150 widgets of productivity, but now it only takes me three hours to manage five people instead of me working 15 hours. I would much rather take the, the latter approach because then it's infinitely scalable. Instead of, and then if, if you go and you hire five more people, now you have 10 people of productivity. Maybe you have to increase your workload to uh, to six hours a day, but you're no longer producing 150 widgets of productivity a day. Now you're, you're, pr you're uh, producing 300 widgets or maybe even many times more than that. And wh when you have this compounding effect of hiring more and more people and getting much more done, you actually have to, you, your ability to work less increases. In fact, you can hire someone to do what you're doing and then you don't have to do anything and then you're just yeah. you're doing the things that you want to do more of and uh you're, you're getting more done than the people who just think that their sole purpose should be to work hard like i i, I mean i'm a huge fan of gary v i absolutely love what he says and he's completely right that most people are not working hard and they're getting absolutely nothing done but if you have a plan and you're let's say running a business i would strongly suggest offshoring and offloading anything that you do not have to do directly. There is gonna be one portion of the job that moves the needle the most, and that's what you should focus 95% of your time on, and then you should hire people to fill the void for absolutely everything else. Therefore, you can be the most productive as well as uh, making your life much easier. Yeah, the uh, the cute way of saying that, as it was explained to me, is you wanna work on the business, not necessarily in the business. Um, what I would say is, Whatever you're doing, there's probably someone who can do it better than you can. And if you can find them and basically bring them on board or buy their time, you're spending a dollar, but you're getting, you know, like a dollar and 50 cents back in return. And likewise, from their perspective, you know, if they have spent their time maximizing or excuse me, if they spent their time maximizing whatever skill set they're doing, it's a match made in heaven. And so, yeah, absolutely, Josh. Um, certainly agree with that front. You mentioned um, when we first got into real estate, I was doing a lot of the management myself. And then I kind of joked that I put myself out of a job. Now, I, I still have a role. Don't get me wrong. As you always do need to have a role. But um, when you get big enough, you're able to start hiring competent managers who themselves have their own skill sets and they you get this boost. And so in a strange way, maybe I would just say is like you you're able to leverage your time better. It's probably the better way of saying that where more gets done, more whether widgets, wealth, whatever, you know, you can be accumulated and, you know, can be shared as well. And at the same time, there's less, you know, sweat equity that you have to put in on your side. So, yeah, completely agree. It, it frees up a, almost a hundred percent of your time. If you look at my day to day right now, I mean, I right now I'm in the process of hiring a bunch of people, and that takes a ton of time because finding the right people, uh, it, it is a very very hard process, and it, it's the most important part for this whole kind of thing to come together. As Justin was just saying, uh, so it, it takes a lot of sweat equity to to make all these people come together. But and then if you manage them, stay on top of them. Yeah, yeah, but once these people get going, and if if I'll, I'll I'll let's give you some real world examples, the people that I'm hiring, they're all in the Philippines, and they all have a very particular job. I, if I had to do every single job, I could do I could do every single job, and I could do it pretty good too. But it, there's ten micro jobs that need to be done, and then all those micro jobs create the one product that that I will be pushing out. So why? do I not hire people to handle those 10 micro jobs? And then I focused on the main product that that moves the bottom line the most. It's the only thing that makes sense. So if you look at my day to day, you are gonna be saying, this is the most pathetic workload I have ever seen ever. 
And you're right. That's exactly what it is. But how much am I actually doing? And how much am I getting done from uh, from having all these employees doing everything for me? I guarantee you, it would be way the the how much I get done right now, where I personally do very little work is not even a hundred, but a thousand times more than I would get done if I was doing everything myself. And and Gary V would look at it, or not actually, but but just because uh, through hypothetically speaking, people would look at it from the outside. Wow. Uh, if you're using the latter example of me doing everything, wow, this kid's so hardworking. Like, like he's he's just, I mean, he's sweating, going, doing everything, get, getting everything done. You know what? He's probably going to be super successful. I'm probably going to burn out if I do that. Whereas the other uh, category right now, what I'm doing, where I I do do a, a lot of work, but nothing near the amount that someone would suspect for kind of everything that's going on. If someone saw my day today, they'd be like, oh, this kid's not going to do anything because I mean, he's he's not doing anything right now. So I mean, like, like, why would he grow a successful company? It's because I've automated everything and and therefore everything can grow without me being directly uh, the growth of my company does not have to do with how much work I put into it. It has to do with how good I, I hire people and the vision of the where the business is going to go. Yeah. Josh, let me throw in one also word of caution here. So as many people probably know, like I grew up um, around the airlines in a sense in my 20s and I saw the airlines. So just as, as you actually know, you can find good people, whether they're onshore or offshore. I would say that's kind of irrelevant, although not necessarily entirely. That's what I wanted to go into. Uh, think about what happened with Boeing recently in the 737s. You had Boeing that was basically outsourcing a lot of the um, the development of that. And as a result of that, they made changes to the plane. They put in some software layers and the people who they farmed out this development to, they basically developed it. It, it, it wasn't done in a good way. So they, they, they could get it done. But like the quality of the people, while they were able to do the job, they weren't able to do the job well enough. The reason I mentioned aviation is when things don't work in aviation, people die, as people did die when you had two 737s fall out of the sky. So my point, though, is, is that I, I do think that there one must always be cautious in the sense that there are some things you can definitely farm out to overseas. But there's other things I think you want to keep close to home. And if I was ever, you know, running a tour or if I, I have found that from my perspective, I very much like to insource roles. So don't get me wrong. I like to offload work, but I like to offload work to entities that I have a stake in myself. And that just might be a personal preference, but just as a quick word of uh, caution, you can, just as you can go too far on, I've got to do everything myself, I've got to do everything myself, you can also go too far and we're going to completely outsource everything. And if you outsource a task to someone who can do an initial run through, but the run through isn't strong enough or isn't, um, doesn't have enough integrity to support what's demanded of the task, again, like a mission critical thing, like, uh, an auto surgical robot or, you know, building an airplane, for example, yeah. Oh, yeah. that's, that's where yeah, you need yeah. to be a oh, bit more diligent. Absolutely, Justin. Uh, but as you know, my employees that no one would consider them brain surgeons. Well, yeah, because, yeah. because the, the jobs that I'm creating are not too uh, skill intensive, that it's pretty easy for, um, someone with a, a decent degree of knowledge to, to do the skill set that I need. So it's very, very easy for me to hire people to put in that position. And I, everything's online. I mean, if I was running a business where I was a product distributor, I mean, I would need people to, uh, in in where, wherever I'm living to kind of micromanage at a much higher degree. Yeah. But it's also, I would consider that working smarter because I'm designing my business around the fact that I do not want to have too many uh, skilled labor positions that I can't fire because I do not want to be reliant upon the employee. So I want to I want to design a business that is very easy to replace whoever is needed to be replaced, as well as uh, it, it's not going to impact the business too much if someone leaves. Yeah, that's an interesting thing because I say took it. I've got this very interesting tendency. I very much like to hire for life from my perspective. Uh, for that. In other words, you want to get people when they're young, and, you know, and train them into the culture. And then, you know, so you, you the employees like this, this incredible asset that stays with you. But I also understand that that's something that you would probably reserve that for more of a high level, more in depth, more specialized functions. And there's probably a role for that, just as there's probably a role for um, the more modular people that can come in and out on that front. In other words, if you have Uber on one end of the spectrum, you know, where people can easily come in and come out, that's a cool thing, you know, if you're a student in school, if you're a retiree, you want someone to talk to, it's great. Do as much or as little work as you want. Awesome, blossom. And on the other end of the spectrum, you have a company like Exxon Mobil, who generally has a has a culture of hiring very young, and people will stay with the firm 30, 40 years. I, I think and, of it like and they Ford do versus things. Ferrari. 
uh, back in the day, Ferrari would make these cars, but it would be very specialized. One person would create the car from from the scratch to the entire car, and it would be incredible. But then Ford said, this is a long process and it's an expensive process. Why don't we just hire a hundred people that are all going to expert on one portion of the car? And then it's a full automation wheel of one person doing one thing every single day. And that's the business model that I want to replicate because therefore, if I know how to do, if I know how to build the car from scratch, I can then hire people to build each individual part of the car. And then I just want to sell the car at the end. And that's you're pretty much what I'm doing with you're my You going to blow your mind? What? Wait till AI is able to take off and clip things like you say, and then automatically edit it. Wait till AI is able to do that on the fly. Because you know that day is coming. It's probably coming sooner than you are, I think. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I would suggest for people, to, I mean, I, when I'm saying to to not work as hard and to work smarter, that is a very vast understatement because of how pathetic most people's work ethic is today. I mean, it doesn't it doesn't account for 99% of the people, but the 1% that thinks that they just need to work harder and that's going to achieve our, all their goals, I would take the opposite argument and say, in fact, you working 15 hours a day is going to be un. Uh, counterintuitive to what you want to accomplish most of the time uh, that there's of course exceptions upon the business that you want to do and what you're trying to accomplish but working smarter almost always uh, achieves more yeah exactly